Hello and welcome back to the Central Nervous System Pharmacology Masterclass. Here we will talk about the fentanyl. So the fentanyl is another opioid analgesic drug and here we will explain the pharmacology related to this medication. Regarding the pictures, on the left picture is for the chemical structure of the fentanyl. The black spheres in the structure are for the carbon atoms. The white spheres are for the hydrogen atoms. The blue spheres is for the nitrogen atoms. And the red sphere is for oxygen atom. And the picture on the right is for the packaging of the fentanyl transdermal patches. And just a reminder here, you can use the video chapters in the description to skip through to other parts of this video if you would like so. So let's start with an overview of the fentanyl. So the fentanyl is a highly potent opioid analgesic drug. It is 50 to 100 times more potent than the morphine. And that makes the fentanyl and its analogous agents the most potent opioids available. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid from the phenylpiperidine family and more on that later. And it is mainly used in management of cancer pain and after painful surgical operations. And it is relatively small quantity of fentanyl can cause overdose and death. So overdose can easily occur with fentanyl and it is a very dangerous medication. So the fentanyl was first synthesized by the Belgian physician Paul Jensen in 1959 by modifying the mepridine. And both the mepridine and the fentanyl are from the same family, which is the phenylpepridine family. The fentanyl is the most widely used synthetic opioid and the most used natural opioid being the codeine. So now the most widely used synthetic is the fentanyl and the most widely used uh, natural opioid is the codeine. The fentanyl and its analogous agents are responsible for the most drug overdose deaths in the uh, United States. Because remember, it is easy to get overdose over this medication. So we already mentioned analogous agents twice and we didn't give examples of them. So now let's do that. So there is a number of drugs that are analogous to fentanyl. They include the sefentanyl, the alfentanyl, the ramifentanyl, carfentanyl, and many more. And some of them are even more potent than the fentanyl itself. Now let's talk about where the fentanyl sits in relation with other opioids available. So regarding opioids, we have the natural, we have the semi-synthetic, and the synthetic opioids. The natural include the morphine, the codeine, those are examples for them. The semi-synthetic example for them being the heroin and the hydromorphone. And the synthetic, we have the agonist, we have the antagonist, and we have the mixed agonist antagonist. The semi-synthetic and the natural, both of them are agonist. And the synthetic ones, as we mentioned, we have agonist, we have antagonist, and we have mixed agonist and antagonist. So the agonist synthetic being the mepridine family, the methadone family, and the tramadol. The mepridine family is originally called the phenylpepridines. The phenylpepridines include the mepridine being the prototypical drug of this family, and it also includes the fentanyl. So the fentanyl would be included in this family, the mepridine family or the phenylpepridine family in the synthetic opioid domain. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of this medication. So it is available as oral, intramuscular, intravenous, transdermal patches, and transmucosal and intranasal formulas. In this picture is the transmucosal formula of the fentanyl, and in this picture is the nasal 
formula or the intranasal formula of the fentanyl. In this picture, as we can see, is the transdermal batch of the fentanyl. And here, the batch after it being applied to the patient arm. So when fentanyl used in transdermal batches, the fentanyl is absorbed slowly through the skin, which you provide continuous extended pain relief over a period of two to three days. So the transdermal batch is applied and it would provide continuous dose to the patient for two to three days. And that make it very convenient for patients with cancer. And it is rarely used as oral formula because of the low bioavailability due to extensive first pass metabolism. And the distribution is that some of the dose bind to plasma proteins, but the rest is delivered to tissues, especially the central nervous system, because it easily passes through the blood brain barrier. It is metabolized to norfentanyl, which is an active metabolite of the fentanyl, and it is less potent than the parent drug. And it is executed through the liver and kidney, and after removal of the patch, there is some residual left which might lead to overdose. So after you remove the patch of the fentanyl, there is some uh, stay in the skin as a residual, and those might also go to the circulation and might cause an overdose uh, later. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the fentanyl. So the fentanyl work as an agonist on the opioid receptors, the mu, the kappa, and delta, which are available everywhere in the human body, especially in the central nervous system. The fentanyl is 50 to 100 times more potent than the morphine when working on these receptors, as we mentioned before. Regarding the pharmacological effects of the fentanyl, when fentanyl activate these receptors, it lead to several central effects, which include analgesia, which is much better than the analgesia with the morphine, uh, because the fentanyl is much more potent than the morphine is, and also it leads to euphoria, which is a pleasant sensation, and it leads to sedation, which makes the patient drowsy or sleepy, and it leads to respiratory depression, which is worse than the morphine because the fentanyl is more potent and it inhibits the respiratory center more than the morphine does. And this might lead to respiratory depression. It also leads to cough suppression and nausea and vomiting. The nausea and vomiting in fentanyl is less than the nausea and vomiting in the morphine. And it leads to meiosis, which is a pupil construction and it leads to pruritus due to histamine release. And it also leads to tranquil rigidity, which is increase the tone in the trunk muscles and more on that later in this video. So again, the analgesia is better, the euphoria is much more, sedation is much more than the morphine, the respiratory depression is much more than with the morphine, and the calf separation also much more uh, the nausea and vomiting is less than the morphine, and the rest are the same. Activation of these receptors lead to several peripheral effects also, and those include effects on the cardiovascular system, which leads to bradycardia and hypotension, because the fentanyl lead to vagal stimulation, which leads to bradycardia. Regarding the GIT system, there is constipation, because it increases the tone inside the large intestine and slows the feces movement there. Regarding the respiratory system, it leads to less bronchoconstriction compared to morphine, because with fentanyl, there is less histamine release, so it leads to less bronchoconstriction compared to morphine. Regarding the urinary system, it may lead to urinary retention because of the increased urethral and the bladder uh, tones. And regarding the immune system, it is associated with decreased immunity due to its inhibitory effect 
on the lymphocytes. Now let's move on to talk about the therapeutic uses of the fentanyl. So the fentanyl is used in anesthesia as an analgesic and it is most commonly used agent in regional anesthesia. It has quick onset of action 5 to 10 minutes after it's being injected and it has intermediate duration of 60 to 120 minutes. It is used in pain management for severe pain in form of transdermal patches as we mentioned earlier, especially for cancer patients. The transdermal fentanyl, 12 micrograms per hour, that is the most uh, common dose that is used, a batch equals to approximately 30 milligrams of oral morphine daily. So if the patient take 12 micrograms of the fentanyl every hour for one day, it would equal 30 milligrams of oral morphine uh, for uh, the whole day. So you see the difference. You see how, how much fentanyl is more potent than the morphine. Fentanyl is safer for renal failure patients than the other opioids. And the opioids that are safe in renal failure, they are not really safe, but they are safer than the other opioids, which are the fentanyl, the alfentanyl, and the puberorphine. Now let's talk about the adverse effects of the fentanyl. So at least to nausea and vomiting, which is less than the morphine as we mentioned, it leads to constipation. It also leads to dry mouth because the patient become drowsy and breathing through their mouth mostly. And it also has inhibitory effect on the salivary glands. And it also leads to headache, confusion, weakness, hallucination, those are related to the activation of the opioid receptors in the CNS and it leads to respiratory depression which is common with fentanyl because it is very potent opioid so it inhibits respiratory center more than the other opioids do as we mentioned before even the sustained release preps may lead to unexpected respiratory depression sometimes and it also leads to hypotension as we mentioned before. Another adverse effect of the fentanyl is the tolerance. Tolerance means is that with recurrent use of fentanyl, there would be receptor upregulation and neuroadaptation to the drug, which make that the same doses that the patient take before would not cause the same effect. It would cause less effects with time. And that makes the patient increase the dose in order to achieve the same previous effects. It also leads to physical dependence, which means is that with recurrent use of fentanyl, the patient body becomes physiologically adapted to the fentanyl. That is when the patient tries to suddenly stop the fentanyl, there would be withdrawal symptoms. It also leads to addiction, which is caused by uh, changes in the brain which leads to behavioral changes and memory changes. And it also leads to wooden chest syndrome. Wooden chest syndrome is a rare adverse effect that happen with the most potent opioids only, with the fentanyl and it is analogous agents. So during fentanyl overdose, the fentanyl increase the tone in chest and abdomen muscles and also in the diaphragm. So the tone in these muscles increase due to the release of noradrenaline and activation of the cholinergic receptors, which lead to activation of the alpha adrenergic receptors and muscle contraction in these uh, locations, in the abdomen, in the chest and the diaphragm. And this induces a respiratory failure and death of the patient with the fentanyl overdose. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and peace.